The FBI and Peace and War, ordinarily heard at this time throughout the year, is taking its usual summer vacation and will return to CBS six weeks from tonight on September 1st. Broadway's My Beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway, where night slips over the canyon streets like a black silk stocking splashed with spangles. Then it's a flashy showgirl on an after-theater date. But during the day, it wears a sleazy house dress, no makeup on its face, and stands on a street corner screaming. Day or night, it wears any face you're looking for, and it's my beat. The coolest place at police headquarters on a July afternoon is in the communications room, but it wasn't cool enough. Sergeant Tartaglia and I were taking turns standing under the fan. It was my turn. The sergeant walked over to a teletype machine, picked up the latest call sheet, came back. He was smiling. Hmm. Oh, this heat, Danny. It's rough on the police, but fine for the law and order. Uh, The phone buzzer, Sergeant. Your number. Yeah. Sergeant Tartaglia. Yeah. Yeah, where? Yeah, got it. What time? 1.12 p.m.? Yeah, right away. What do you got, Sergeant? Ah, it was too good to last. 30 call. Homicide. Be with you in a second, Danny. Okay. Commissioner, Sergeant Tartaglia. Reporting a homicide, sir. Dodge Theater on 46th Street, Waterville House. Yes, sir, a performer. Right. Sergeant Tartaglia speaking. Put this on the wires. Special to squad cars 19, 22, and 69. Special to homicide. Special to chief of detectives. To special detail. Hey, wait a minute. Now, that's you, Danny. Got it? Dodge Theater. 30 call. Performer murdered, right? Right. You squad car 47. See ya. Yeah. Okay. Back to you. Special to technical research laboratory. Special to coroner. To ballistics. Your squad car stabs tears, rips through a city, and its wail is like a piece of broken glass that slashes across its face. You can see the terror, silent and quick, in the blur of the city making way for you. It was maybe 1.25 when I hit the alley leading to the stage door of the Dodge Theater and twisted the car into it. It must have been a comedy act playing in front of the heavy and stained velvet curtain. The laughter and the music from the orchestra pit cut through from the front of the theater and washed against a wall of grim and blank faces backstage. Under the naked yellow glare of a single stage work light lay a man in a glittering sequin-covered suit of tights. He lay there like some muscular statue torn from its pedestal. But the web of blood told you it was a lie. The ballistics man, the medical examiner, the photographer, the fingerprint man, technical research... All worked and moved silently, weaving their way from shadow into light and back again. Then out of the shadows, a dapper little guy named Georgie walked over to me. Oh, Danny, Danny, am I glad to see you. Hi, Georgie. How are you? These other guys, your colleagues, they're cold, very, very cold. But you, you're warm and friendly. Yeah, it's a hot day, isn't it, Georgie? Oh, you think so, Danny? I keep telling these guys in the front office, the air conditioning in this theater, oh, boy, it's a lie, a fable, an illusion. You're rough on a house manager, huh, Georgie? No air conditioning. Oh. Now this... You're so right, Danny. How will it look on the report when I tell the front office there was a murder act in the theater and I didn't even give it billing? <laughs> Bad joke, huh, Danny? You told me better ones. Now tell me about the man, Georgie. The, uh, dead one? The dead one. Who? What? Maybe why? Who? He was an athlete from Vienna. He was an acrobat. His name was Prokosh, Otto yeah. Prokosh. And, uh, he was an athlete of muscle and steel. A filthy, rotten brain and a nice, clean body. Now, that brings us to why. I had a reason why. Do you want to hear my reason, Danny? You lay yourself wide open that way, Georgie. Doesn't matter. I don't believe in wasting time. This I understand from having once been an usher at the Roxy. Shall I write it down? If you want to. This dead Adonis, this this murdered Achilles, this filth called Otto, 
making tempting noises into the ears of my wife. You don't have to answer this one if you don't want it, Georgie. Did she listen? My wife? Ruth? That you'll have to ask her herself. You'll find her in dressing room six right up those stairs. I'll ask her later. Now, tell me how it happened. Ah, this I wouldn't know. I was in the front office counting the house, the way a manager should. Oh? Yes, Danny, yes. And you can check on it, I too. I can. I will, George. Uh, uh, Danny, you'll have to excuse me a minute. Say, has anybody seen Lee Emery come in? Has anybody seen Lee? <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me, will you? I, I work here. i got to get on stage. Sure, in a minute. Who are you? Lee Emery, dancer. I dance for the people. What are you, an agent? You're late, Emery. Georgie's over there looking for you. Oh, what's he got to worry about? He's a manager. I'm a dancer. I'm never late. Well, the people are waiting for your dancer. But stick around. I want to talk to you. I'm from the police. But of course, there's been trouble. Murder. But of course, I'll stick around. Hey, Emery, get on stage. There's your music. Okay, Georgie, okay. Georgie, what was that dressing room number? Six? Uh, six, Danny, six. Yeah, six. Yeah, what are you... No autographs, please. I'm Danny Clover, police. Looking for Ruth Houston. Georgie said she'd be here. Well, Georgie always knows where Ruth is, doesn't he, Ruth? He always knows. Except he finds it tough to keep up with a fast package like I. Pay no attention to Shelley, Mr. Clover. Shelley's a comic. He makes jokes. Well, Shelley Sheldon, I, I've seen you. Oh, you've lived. You don't have to talk to policemen if you don't want to, Ruth. I know a lawyer who says it's all right not to talk to a policeman. You take advice from this comedian, Mrs. Houston? What do you want to know? Georgie was telling me about Otto, the acrobat. He said you could tell me more. Sure, I can tell you a lot. One, he was a beautiful man. Two, he made passes at me. Three, I loathed him. Does that cover it, Mr. Clover? Maybe. Why are you at the theater today? I come down every day. I love vaudeville. Maybe it's because I make you laugh, huh, Ruthie? Girl needs a man who makes her laugh. And I'm the best. How did you feel about Otto, Mr. Sheldon? Shelly. Call me Shelly. Murder makes us all friends, doesn't it, Danny boy? Let's keep it formal. My suspects usually call me Lieutenant. Ah. Well, Lieutenant, I'll tell you about Otto. I hated his guts. He was egotistical, vain, selfish, arrogant, snobbish. He loved himself. No, no the kind of a guy I mean. It went like that. Vaudeville actors are just like any other people. They're scared. They're cooperative. They're uncooperative. Depending upon their attitude toward policemen and their own conscience. The agile little dancer named Lee Emery was different. I interviewed him in his dressing room. It was like no interview I ever had before. Lee Emery danced through it. A kind of weird soft shoe ballet to the music of a battered phonograph. It was as if he were a grotesque puppet on strings. The strings were dangled from some place of strangeness in his brain. I had to blink. Does it bother you? My dancing, Lieutenant Clover? Clover. Clover. Thanks. That's interesting music you're dancing to. Interesting? Is it? That's interesting. Why is it interesting, Lieutenant? It's the music you danced to on stage earlier. Oh, I'm pleased. It struck you. You remember me as an artist. Well, it was played in a different tempo. Faster. And now as a blues. Hey, watch. End of show, Lieutenant. Oh, you're a fine dancer, Emery. Oh. Tell me, why the different tempos to your music? Doesn't it throw your performance off? Ah, not at all. You see, I had a half a dozen records made of this music. All different rhythms. Mm -hmm. All different moods. Before each performance, I practice the one I shall do. Depends on my feeling at that moment. Oh, you don't feel good now, huh? Oh, Lieutenant, I'm in love with the world. Last night, I took a walk in the Bowery. I talked with the poor, sodden fragments of humanity who people it. Now I am disenchanted. Next performance, my dancing will be a mirror of that feeling. Oh, so the orchestra conductor will play your music as blues. Uh -huh. Must be a pleasure for him to work with someone as creative as you. Thank you. Dancing Lieutenant Plover is, is an ultimate within itself. The antics, the grotesqueries of humankind distilled into classic, flawless expression. Uh, 
Now you say something philosophical, Lieutenant. Yeah, try this. Did you have any reason to kill that acrobat? But of course. As a performer, he was a bum. I wished him dead. From a purely artistic standpoint, of course. But you know what, Lieutenant? Tell me. I didn't kill him. I am a coward. You have music for that, too? But of course. Would you care to hear it? I didn't care to. Emery looked at me sadly, bowed, and I made an exit. The next morning at headquarters, the reports came in. Ballistics said the bullet had been fired through a silencer on a 38 frame. It entered the acrobat's shoulders with a downward passage. The shot had come from backstage, from somewhere high in the wings where peeling sets of scenery hung. Coroner's report, death was instantaneous. The solution of murder almost never is. I found Star- Sergeant Dar- Tartaglia out of the way and took my turn under the fan. That murder at the theater, Danny, a toughie, huh? Yeah, I don't know. It's too early to tell. Suspects? Any of them? Goes like this, Sergeant. House manager Georgie Houston hated the acrobat because the acrobat made grand passes at his wife, Ruth. No, oh, jealousy's a good, sound, substantial motive, I always say. Yeah, I always say it's a 100% motive. The modest comic, Shelley Sheldon, he likes Ruth, too. Another 100% motive. <laughs> Lieutenant Clover speaking. Lieutenant, I told you. I told you. Who is this? Lee Emery. I told you I was a coward, Lieutenant. So? A man. He was standing across the street for the last hour. What man? What are you talking about? Listen, listen to me. I don't know what man. He was watching the window of my room, and just a minute ago, he walked into this hotel. Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Lieutenant, there's someone opening the door. Lieutenant! Emery! Emery! You didn't need a cop's mind to put that shot and Emery's scream together. I thumbed through my notebook and got Emery's address. By the time I was downstairs, a squad car was waiting, its motor running. The siren channeled the street between headquarters and West 56. It took four minutes to get there. Emery's room was three flights up and walked back. The room was empty. No Lee Emery, nothing. Correction. The room was filled with Emery's music coming from the phonograph. That and a narrow streak of blood that wormed on the threadbare grass rug. But most of all, it was Emery's music. It was happy, real happy. I couldn't stand it. The room needed another quality. The quality that came after terror. A sigh, maybe, or silence. And I had the feeling Lee Emery had just bought himself a large piece of that. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. One of the most successful dramas ever presented on the CBS Escape series will be repeated tonight. C.S. Montague's story entitled Action. The tale of a man who scales a mountain contemplating suicide and who finds a reason to live when he finally reaches the top. On Crime Photographer, you'll hear the fascinating tale of Durable Dennis, whose head was x-rayed to solve a $75,000 theft. In case someone tells you to get your head x-rayed, hear the story of Durable Dennis on Crime Photographer as well as Action on the series Escape. They'll both be here just a little later tonight on most of these same CBS network stations. Now, back to Broadway's My Beat. Broadway is a place that can get happy about a lot of things. A cat in a tree, a wrestler with curls who scents the ring with perfume, even by a swami who predicts the world is coming to an end by high noon tomorrow. Right now, the current happiness was touched off by a rumor that vaudeville was coming back. But I had proof positive that it was dying all over again. Item, a dead acrobat shot while opening the bill at the Dodge Theater. Item, a terrified hoofer named Lee Emery, who left only an afterimage of blood and music. Item, I had work to do. Work was routine. 
I called headquarters, told them to send out a missing person call on Emory, told them where I was going and went. When I got backstage, the Dodge Theater was making ready to put on its false face for the first batch of customers. Ruth Houston was standing against a backdrop, considering the lighted end of a cigarette. When she saw me, she looked as if she could do without me. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. You want to see me? Does that make it any worse, Mrs. Houston? Frankly, Lieutenant, there comes a time in every woman's life when she doesn't feel like talking to the police. Uh, now is the precise instant, huh? It's like this, Lieutenant. I I'm being sad. I'm being sad about a lot of things. Each one takes time. Yeah, but I'm afraid I'll have to interrupt the emotion. What's making you sad, Mrs. Houston? This, this whole thing will just wreck him. This, this thing of Otto's murder. Wreck who? My husband, Georgie. He had a good thing here at the Dodge. He was just going good. You get sad about Otto? I can do that, too. Otto thought he could beckon to a woman by flexing a bicep. He needed talking to. He, he didn't need killing. Maybe making muscles wasn't the reason he was killed. It's your job to think like that, Lieutenant. Tell me this, Mrs. Houston. How buddy were you with Lee Emery? Him? Him. Lee Emery. What could Emery do for me, Dan? Is he around now? I haven't seen him. He hasn't shown up for the show. You don't know where he is. You took the words right out of my mouth. I wouldn't know where he is. I wouldn't want... Excuse me, Lieutenant. Sure. Hello? Hello? Yes? Yes, he's here. For you, Lieutenant, your office, or whatever you call your office. Thanks. Clover speaking. Danny, Tartaglia. We got him, kid. We got Lee Emery. Yeah, where'd you find him? The East River Docks. Anyhow, that's where we fished him out. He's newly dead, Danny. The wet gray heat had turned into a wet gray drizzle when I arrived at the East River Dock. Three hooded cops on horseback held back a crowd whose face looked like it had a veil drawn over it. And in between the foghorns and the boat whistles, you heard the soft whinny of a horse. You couldn't quite believe it. Then a splash of blue named Mugovan, Harbor Police, cut through the grayness. Him you had to believe. Okay, okay, stand back, stand back now. Come on, Danny, hold my hand. I'll get you through this barrier of curious onlookers. Thanks, Mugovan. All right, out of the way, out of the way now. Now, why don't you yokels get in out of the rain? Ain't you heard the song, It's Wet Outside? That's a great act, Mugovan. Add, Danny, it builds. From hatred to love. The surly sneers of the mob become smiles of pleasure when I'm through molding their emotions. Uh, when you get a chance, mold me a ham sandwich, huh, Mugovan, on rye. Huh? You mean right now? No, not now. Now just tell me about him. Well, it's like you see, Danny. First they shot him in the face, twice, from up close. Then they threw him in the river. How long did you say he was in the river? Uh, not long, Danny, just long enough to wash him clean. Yeah. Anything on him? Yeah, this wallet and these papers, social security card issued to Lee Emery. Mm. Maryland driver's license made out to Lee Emery. Description, as stated, adds up to Lee Emery. Except for complexion and color of eyes. That, naturally, we can't tell. And this initial ring with the initials L-E, that spells Lee Emery. Yeah, I've seen the ring. Do something for me, Mugovan. Sure. You still want that sandwich, Danny? Call headquarters for me. Have him pick up Georgie Houston, his wife, Ruth Houston... And a funny, funny boy named Shelley Sheldon. Sheldon? Oh, he's very funny. I get a lot of my material from him. Have them meet me at the morgue. I want them to identify a body. This is a cold place you picked for me to play a matinee, Danny boy. How do I get yaks in the morgue? I wouldn't know, comedian. You work it out. You know, this whole reminds me of a theater I once played in Des Moines. Same type atmosphere, same type audience reaction. I was making with bombs and those hasties just lay there like, like these stiffs. Shut up, <laughs> Shelly, shut up. Haven't you got any respect? What's the matter, Georgie? The silent dead make you nervous? No, Shelly, they bring me peace. That's why I give them respect. Oh, Danny, why did you bring us up here? I want you to identify a body that was washed up in the East River. Anybody we know? That's a good question. Here we are. figure is familiar, but the face... What am I saying? What face? What do you say, Georgie? The suit. Yeah, I, I recognize the suit. It's exactly the same type suit Lee Emery wore every day of his life. Mm. He had a made in pairs. He always said if you found something that made you feel good, why change it? Is, uh, is that Lee Emery, Danny? Shelley, is this Lee Emery? 
Yeah, yeah. How do you know? The shoes. They're a dancer shoes. Soft shoe type shoes. The kind of shoes a dancer like Lee Emery wears when he's doing soft shoe type dancing. Do I make it clear, Danny boy? Oh, no, I lived without you. Do you recognize this ring? Yeah, Danny. That's Lee's ring, all right. He hocked it with me once when he needed some dough. All right. That's so. You mean we can go now, Danny? Yeah, you can go back to the theater, Georgie. They'll need you. Now, wait a minute, Danny boy. It's not that easy. Hmm? I've got a twist. I'd like to ask you some questions. I thought you'd have some. I'll try to answer them, Mr. Sheldon. Lee Emery, the, the boy in the box... He was murdered, huh? We think so, Mr. Sheldon. That means you suspect that maybe Georgie or me murdered him. Could be, Mr. Sheldon. This is the snapper, policeman. What makes me rate so high in your favor? There are others who were involved with Lee Emery. Like who, Mr. Like Sheldon? Like any of the other people at the Dodge Theater. Like, like Ruthie, the wife of Georgie. Who are you lousy? Take your hand. Hold it, Georgie. I'd like to answer, Mr. Sheldon. The cop, Mr. Sheldon, looks for motive. A good motive for killing the boy in there would be that he knew who killed Otto, the acrobat. That could be you, Georgie, or Ruth. By the way, Georgie, where is Ruth? I've been waiting for you to tell me why she isn't here. Why, she was at the theater last time I saw her. Why? She's not there anymore, Georgie. The boys upstairs tell me she's not anywhere. Maybe you can help the boys upstairs, Georgie. Danny, you... You mean you can't find her? You mean the whole police department can't find her? Danny, Danny, you've got to find her. You've got to. We will, Georgie. We will. Here you are, Sergeant. Send this call out over the intercom right away. Yeah, Danny. Attention, all cars. Attention, all cars. 3.25 p.m. Pick up Ruth Houston. Ruth Houston. She is five feet, four inches tall. Weight, about 121 she has black hair. Black hair. Dark brown eyes. Attractive. Maybe in the company of a man. Maybe carrying suitcase. Check bus, rail, and plane terminals. Urgent. Get the squad car moving, Joe. Grand Central. Yeah. Uh, Patrolman Mitchikoff calling precinct headquarters at 3.45 p.m. Not in the... Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5, 4, 121, black hair. Yeah, I got it. I just went through. I'm sure that was a green light. Yeah, I know. Okay, you can go. I don't understand that. Now you say I can go. Why? Because your eyes aren't brown. Tartaglia speaking. Yeah? Good. 14th Street Precinct? Right away. They got her, Danny. Holding her at the 14th Street Precinct. Let's go. Hello, officer. Where is she? In there with the matron. Nice work, fellow. There she is, Danny. You can go home, miss. You're not the right Ruth Houston. <laughs> Lieutenant Clover speaking. Danny? Mugger from Harbor Police. Yeah? You got something hot. Something directly from the laps of the guards. Don't make a production out of it, Mugger. Just tell me what it is. Ruth Houston. Does the name bring a smile to your lips, Danny? Come on, come on, Muggerman. What's the story? As follows. I was in a coffee joint on the pier, like I always am at 9 p.m., so I can talk to my friend Marty Udenfreud, the cab driver whom I befriended. We talk. And routinely I tell him this description of one Ruth Houston. Okay so far, Danny? Muggerman, the night's so long and lonely in Flatbush. What about Ruth Houston? Well, Marty has her for a fare about 7.30. Takes her to a pier on the Hudson River. How did he know she was Ruth Houston? Oh, well, she was a looker. The description tallies in the initials on her suitcase was R.H. Go on. Then she gets on a boat. The good ship Christina, a freighter. Great. Hold that boat, Muggerman. Don't let it move. I hope you have good reason to delay the voyage of the Christina. What can we do for you, Lieutenant? Now just tell me where to find the girl who looks like this picture. Show it to him, Muggerman. Here she is, Captain. A princess. Ah. Yeah, yeah, she's here. She and her husband. A husband? Oh. Your face looks like it is perhaps not her husband. When did he get on board? Uh, it was very romantic. 
He borrowed the Christina hours before we sailed, locked himself in the cabin, and waited for his young girl. Romantic, yeah? Yeah. Where's the cabin, Captain? I, I will show you. Just tell us. We want to meet them alone. It is down the end of this long passageway. The door on your left. Let's go, Mugovan. Danny Clover, Mrs. Houston. Open up. Open up. Get back. Get back. Yeah. Well, looks like the little lady don't want to see us. Looks like I'll have to open the door from this side. I think now it's okay for us to enter, Danny. Yeah. I heard her, Danny. Let me see. Uh, it's not too bad. Go get the captain. He'll know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I wasn't wrong. Phonograph and some records. All right, Emery. Come out. I know you're here. Sure, Lieutenant Clover. I was coming anyway. That music attracts me. I thought it would. You okay? Sure. I ducked into the washroom when you started shooting back. Roots hurt, though, isn't she? Yeah. I'll take your gun. Here. You're clever, Lieutenant Clover. You're an artist. Only because you made a mistake. Play me my mistake. You shot that man's face away. At least more than just that trickle of blood you arranged in your room. But you know about things like that, Emery. Who was he? He was nothing. An absolute nothing. A zero. An empty circle. I knew you'd figure it that way. You told me you walked the Bowery for art. You walked it to find a derelict who was the same size, the same build as you. That was his only use, you figured. So you used him. <laughs> you killed him. You thought I'd believe you were dead. That leaves Otto the acrobat. Why should I have killed a useful man like Otto? Ruth being here tells me that, Emery. Otto liked her, too. Competition from a man like Otto frightens two lovers like you. So you killed him. But of course. Ah, uh, I said you were an artist. Now, if you'll pardon me, Lieutenant Clover. I didn't stop him. It needed a touch like that. Emery's dancing to a dirge. This time he danced as if the puppet strings from his brain had been cut away and the madness was complete. When Mugovan came back with the captain, they stopped in the splintered doorway and stood there. Just stood there. But in a little while, the dance was over. There's no fury on Broadway now. It's dawn. And the angry avenues of the night are still. But in a few hours, it'll renew itself. The bang and the clatter and the rack and roar and the voice. Because it's Broadway. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover is produced and directed by Gordon T. Hughes with script by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Musical direction is by Lud Gluskin. Be sure to join us again next week, same time, same station for Broadway's My Beat. It's a sealed room mystery, a favorite of detection connoisseurs on Mr. Keen tonight. The victim, a wealthy book publisher. The sealed room, an air-conditioned, windowless library bolted on the inside. Mr. Keene's latest case, Murder and the Bolted Room, will be along not very many minutes from now on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>